tunnel drive. Then we will be going to the river walk. The walk of the river for sedimentary rocks. Igneous rocks crystallize at high temperatures and sometimes at high pressures as magma and lava cool. From igneous rocks, you have weathering and erosion that lead to sediments, which will lead to deposition and lithification, which will ultimately lead to sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks could then undergo heat and pressure and stress, which would then lead into metamorphic rocks. After some partial melting, we have magma. New material would be added to the cycle, there would be cooling and crystallization which lead us around a never-ending cycle. As geologists and humans have learned over many years, weathering processes made the planet suitable for human habitation. Weathering refers to the changes in the physical and chemical characteristics of a rock. As the authors of physical geology uses an example, a car sitting in rainy weather will start to rust. Weathering causes rocks to break down into smaller particles by the action of water, atmosphere, and organisms. Erosion is the physical removal of rock particles by things such as running water or glaciers. Weathering helps break down a rock and erosion helps transport that rock. This brings us to our first two stops. Ancestral Rockies rose 325 million years ago and then eroded completely away with seas moving inland and then receding several times. Around 65 million years ago, the Laramide Aragony pushed the land up again until it formed a new hump running from north to south known as the Sawatch Uplift. After 35 million years, stresses in the continental plate pulled at this hump from both sides until the center broke loose and slid downward. The fallen part created a trough that spanned from Leadville to New Mexico, known as the Rio Grande Rift. During this period, 30 million years ago, volcanoes spewed lava and ash that formed mountains and hills along the eastern side of the rift where the mosquito range lies. Runoff from both sides formed the Arkansas River, which flowed south through the rift and joined the Rio Grande River. Oh, oh. During these three separate glacial episodes over the last one million years, and as recently as 10,000 years ago, glaciers scoured the Sacagawea Range and filled the valley with deep layers of rocks and dirt. The masses of sedimentary sediment drastically affected the course of the Arkansas River. The geologic action both blessed and cursed the upper Arkansas River Valley with the wealth in gold, silver, and semi-precious gems. Although the mining boom is over, many people still search for treasure in the Arkansas River and surrounding hills. Today, the mountains rise and erode at about the same speed, maintaining a near constant elevation. Magma below the surface of the mountains continues to fuel the local hot springs, and the Arkansas River continues to carve its channel.
Lithification is the general term for the processes that convert loose sediment into sedimentary rock. Typically, sedimentary rocks are lithified by a combination of compaction, which packs loose sediments tightly together, and cementation, which the precipitation of cement grains bind them into a firm, coherent rock. Crystallization of minerals from solution without passing through the loose sediment stage is another way that rocks may be lithified. rocks are types of rock that are formed by the deposition and subsequent cementation of that material at the earth's surface and within bodies of water. Cement sedimentation is the collective name for a process that causes mineral and or organic particles detritus to settle in place. Sedimentary rocks such as breccia, conglomerate, sandstone, siltstone, and shale are formed from mechanical weathering debris. Breccia is a classic sedimentary rock that is composed of large, over 2 mm diameter angular fragments. The spaces between large fragments can be filled with a matrix of smaller particles or a mineral cement which binds the rock together. The specimen shown above is about 2 inches, or 5 centimeters, across. Chemical sedimentary rocks such as rock salt, iron ore, chert, flint, and some dolomites and some limestones form when dissolved minerals precipitate from solution. Iron ore is a chemical sedimentary rock that forms when iron and oxygen and sometimes other substances combine in solution and deposit as a sediment. Hematite is the most common sedimentary iron ore mineral. The specimen shown above is about 2 inches or 5 centimeters across. Organic sedimentary rocks such as coal, some dolomites, and some limestones form from the accumulation of plant or animal debris. Siltstone is a classic sedimentary rock that forms from silt size between 1 out of 256 and 1 16th millimeter diameter, weathering debris. Specimens in the photo are about 2 inches or 5 centimeters across. Thanks for joining us on our little journey today. I hope you learned something about geology. Um, today the mountains erode at about the, oh, I stepped on an anthill.